And this is San Francisco. And more importantly, this is also Fisherman's Wharf. Now, Fisherman's Wharf is a little bit different than some other tourist sites in America. Unlike most tourist sites, Fisherman's Wharf was never really intended to be a tourist site. It kind of evolved from a natural workplace into what it is today. And even today, it's not really a singular tourist site. It's more like a bunch of businesses clustered together that are all tailored to suit the needs of any tourist that might come. <sighs> Anyways, on to history. So in the early days of the San Francisco Gold Rush, the northern waterfront of San Francisco was used by Chinese immigrants who used fishing junks in order to catch seafood to feed the thousands of prospectors in the area. Because there were so many prospectors, this was a very profitable business, and eventually the area became a home to Italian fishermen who used small sailing boats known as felucas. Felucas, which are classically styled sailing vessels modeled after the traditional Italian fishing boats in the old world, were a very common sight in the early days of the area. Um, these small vessels were about 30 feet and were good, but not great. So when the gas engine came into existence, they were quickly replaced by what's known as a Monterey hull boat. And that's right here. Um, these boats were very efficient. Get it? Efficient? It's like a fish. I practiced that. Anyways, these boats were very useful for fishermen. Um, it made it easy for fishermen to catch fish, to go farther distances, and to do everything hmm, faster, I guess you could say. Um, these boats were so efficient, actually, that they're still used today. And they also transformed the San Francisco Bay Area into a fishing hotspot on the West Coast. This, this started to attract all sorts of businesses, businessmen, and entrepreneurs, such as Henry Miggs, or Meigs. I don't actually know how to pronounce his name, but check out the bow tie on this guy. Meigs built what's known as Meigs Wharf, which is a long wooden pier that extends 1,600 feet into the bay, originating at the Embarcadero Street in San Francisco. Here it is. What's important about Meigs Wharf is that it was the original fisherman's wharf. Up until that point, as you can see in the video, there are no other big wharfs. There are a couple of small ones tailored for smaller vessels such as the Felucas, but this was the original Fisherman's Wharf, and this is also the site that modern day Fisherman's Wharf is based off of. Now, unfortunately for Miggs, angry creditors chased him out of the city just, just after the pier was completed in 1853, and he was forced to flee to South America, where he died in 1877. Rest in peace, Henry Miggs. <laughs> you were a great man. Even without Miggs, though, the pier was a huge success, not only for fishermen, but also for weekend relaxers who liked to use the area to swim and bathe and to relax, I guess. Um, some entrepreneurs made it available, made small houses available, so you could actually rent a beachfront house, beachfront house excuse me, and stay there for a little while. Um, the area became a local tourist attraction, but it wasn't until much later that it became a genuine international tourist hellhole. Anyways. During this time, another San Francisco icon became, began to pop up. This is the cable car. Invented by the Scottish engineer Andrew Haldy, um, the cable car was intended as an easy way of transportation over the many hills in San Francisco. Um, as the legend goes, Haldi witnessed a free cable car accident, I mean, sorry, a horse-drawn carriage accident in which a horse-drawn carriage plummeted down a steep, wet slope in San Francisco and the two horses died. Tragic. Haldi did not think this was a good idea because I guess he thought horses were cool or something, so he invented a better idea. Um, Haldi was experienced with pulley systems and wire rope mechanics as he was an engineer working on the Sacramento Bridge area. Um, this was still when some mining was going on. Haldi drafted some plans for a pulley car cable 
system that went into construction in May 1872. Um, most of the locals thought this sounded like a death trap, and it was dubbed Haldi's Folly. But in the early hours of August 2nd, 1873, the very first test run of the cable car was made, and it was made successfully. Shortly after, the entire city was taken over by the cable car, which turned into the main form of transportation for San Francisco. After the public bus system came into rise later, um, the cable car system was abandoned, but was more or less kept intact as a kind of tourist attraction. In the late 1970s, the original cable car system was declared unsafe for public use and was entirely rebuilt over the course of two years. Today, the cable car system is still in use, although it primarily, primarily serves as a local tourist attraction rather than a genuine mode of transportation. During the 19... Oh yeah, time travel thing here, like modern day to 1920s, so 1920s. The Fisherman's Wharf area saw the rise of several large businesses, mainly the Ghirardelli Chocolate Factory. Um, the Ghirardelli Chocolate Factory moved into the old Pioneer Woolen Mill, which used to manufacture clothing and blankets for Union troops during the Civil War. After the Civil War ended, this building fell out of use, but was renovated by the Ghirardelli Company, who took it over. Adjacent to the Ghirardelli Chocolate Factory was the California Fruit Canners Association, founded by Marco Fantana. At the time, this was actually the largest canning operation in the world. Um, they contracted for the Del Monte Fruit brand. Very good fruit by them. Um, check them out. I knew them before they were mainstream, but... Uh... It was only in 1963, though, that Fisherman's Wharf became a tourist attraction in earnest. Um, a Manchurian immigrant and businessman known as Leonid Matveyev, also known as Leonard Martin, bought the site of the old fruit cannery and turned it into a shopping mall. Um, this, combined with the great views of Alcatraz and the Golden Gate Bridge, soon attracted lots of sm small other businesses, mainly all sorts of kitschy tourist shops and gimmicky amusement ride and all of that crap. Anyways. <laughs> the Fisherman's Wharf area soon became popular internationally as a um, tourist spot, as it was one of the few places in San Francisco that served only tourists. Um, the San Francisco Fisherman's Wharf was not viewed in the best light by local residents, who viewed it as a tourist trap tacky or just plain gimmicky in um in 2011 a 15 million dollar plan to renovate the site and to improve its view from both both tourists and locals was planned the plan the bill proposed to add new roads new attractions new signs to clean up the place basically however in the recession in the years soon after the bill was proposed plans to renovate the site were curved and were not carried out. Sad face. Regardless, the site remains one of the most popular tourist sites in San Francisco, for better or for worse. The end. No.